Hey everybody, welcome back. HSC Podcast 91. Big box Steve on the mic. Got the big smooth and fresh Wes. It's always nice when Wes is on time. Appreciate that, Wes. <laughs> he comes fashionably late, you know. It's one of those where if if they don't wait for me, then is this a meeting I'm supposed to go to? Oh. Wes, when when we have a tea time playing golf, do you get there at the tea time? <laughs> Goes. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. I I mean, of course it. <laughs> He's like, of course, because because it's golf. <laughs> and your dad's there like an hour early, so. Yeah, Team John's always there on time. <laughs> speaking of team john we'll talk about that later but did you see that oh my god Ow. I, I, we can't even Ow. get into that we can't even, oh man we'll get into that later <laughs> team john but uh yeah so uh you guys are listening on uh youtube don't forget to subscribe and like thanks for listens on our podcast spotify anchor appreciate the listens uh here we go New week in the NFL. Uh, not a lot happening in college football, but there's some college football I want to talk about before we get into the NFL stuff. So, first of all, the NIL stuff happening right now. I don't know if you guys have seen this, so I want to talk about this a little bit. We'll just start with Marvin Harrison Jr. $20 million to stay and play? You see this? No. Wait a minute. Twenty million. They're yeah. talking NIL money. Upwards of twenty million dollars to stay at Ohio State and play another year. Why? To do for. Well, my guess is that they're trying, or the the boosters, the advertisers. They believe that they get paid more if Iowa State wins, right? Or they want to keep them there. They have plenty of money, right? But how is this going to set a really bad precedent for trying to keep players in in the NCAA to uh, not go to the NFL and make more? Because yeah. right now, twenty million is more than his guaranteed contract will be as a even a top five pick. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hear. I've heard a couple numbers with some guys. Now there's talk about how much it would cost to keep a or get a good quarterback in the portal. Two million dollars on yeah. average. Yeah, easily. Right. There's, there's all these numbers going around, but twenty million. I mean, this is stupid. It's absolutely ridiculously stupid that any college player get paid $20 million. It's absolutely idiotic. Let's put it that way. I mean, 20 I think it's... Bo Nix, what did he get? Like $1.5 million last year? No, he made almost $6 million. Oh, my God. Oh. Got to get their money back. Yeah, you, you definitely I mean, get your money back. No wonder he wants to stay for an eighth year. <laughs> so, like how many years he he's get? thirty? Well, he's going to retire. What I think, though, it's a, it's just a perfect storm. It's these Ohio State boosters. Excuse me. I've lost to Michigan three straight years. They're desperate. Right. They're scapegoating McCord, saying it was his fault. So he's gone. He's gone, so they're going to spend this money on Marvin Harrison Jr. Then they're going to pay like Dante Moore or somebody to come in and be the quarterback. And then that's what they're doing. They're trying to buy a championship. Hey. I mean, I guess they – so who's their quarterback going to be? That That's the real question. You said Dante Moore? Well, they're going to bring in someone, right? And they're going to pay another – what five million dollars in IL for that quarterback that comes in? 
It's absolutely idiotic. Like, but so okay. that so that's why he. I knew it was. I knew that there was a number. But I just didn't think it'd be. It'd be so that. if you're if you're Marvin Harrison Jr. right now, and you're getting talks of up to twenty million dollars, like what are you going to do? Well, your choices are you either stay and get the twenty million, or you go to the Bears, Cardinals, or Patriots. Right? right. That's your choices. Yeah. And if you don't want to go to one of those teams, then you then probably you are take the twenty office. million, right? Yeah. So doesn't it? Is isn't this like given they and it, I think exactly what you're talking about, Derek? Is now when you look at the minds of these guys, they're starting to think about who's going to draft me, right? Right. And then and, then you gotta decide on the money. You gotta say, well, should I stay or should I go? Or do I want to go to the Bears or do I want to go to the Cardinals or you know something is remember back in the day, things like used to be like you could see scenarios where a, a Marvin Harrison would be like, All right, I'll take the 20 million, right? And then I'll see where I'm positioned. I'm going to be in the top three, but maybe I don't like those teams next year. Right. So back in the day with guys used to, they used to go to the USFL because they would pay like top dollar for some of these players. So it's like you go like, okay, I don't like those teams. I got to go pro or just keep playing college. I mean, how many years can you play? Six years? Caleb Williams is in a similar situation, right? If if let's say Marvin Harrison Jr. stays and they they he it's not going to be on paper but it it's reported for the twenty million right yeah he may get that same deal yeah and then he may say I don't want to go to the Cardinals I don't want to go to the Patriots problem with Caleb Williams is he needs to go now because his stock is dropping. Right. People are actually trying to say that he's not the number one quarterback. I, I, I Oh, well, let's talk about that for a second. Do you guys agree with that? No. Because well, well, let's talk about Jaden Daniels for a second, right? This guy went from... No, no, no. Let's not talk about Jaden Daniels. Let him <laughs> fall to the Raiders. But, let's well, stop talking look about Jaden Daniels. He moved up. Like, he moved up a lot, right, recently. He wasn't even a top 10 pick. Yeah. They weren't talking about him in the first round for a while. And now they're talking about him at like above Drake May. No, I haven't seen that. I've seen it go Williams and May go one and two. And then Daniels is like in the top 10. And then after that, it's like. I see him four. I saw yeah. him at four. Yeah, I saw it. I saw the same thing with the uh, one she won the Heisman. Caleb went at one, Daniels went at four, and then K, uh, Drake May went at like six or something like that. So, I mean, that Heisman. I'm staying helped. away from Drake May. That's all I got to say. I don't want Drake May. I don't want him three. I don't want him four. Yeah. I mean, that's it, that's just. There's too many question marks to get him that high, especially when you got Daniels. Yeah, but you, look, dude, this dude's playing for North Carolina, though. Yeah, just like Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, though, what if you put Drake May at LSU? Give Give him Malik Neighbors. It, it's it's um, you there are two different quarterbacks because I think just. The explosiveness Daniels brings. Yeah. He's a different player. It depends. You know, pick do you want Joe Burrow or do you want, you know, you want Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson, right. Yeah. You know, it, it's, that's it's a kind of like which one do you want? I, I think that's a good like early in, in their careers comparison is would be uh Jackson and Burrow and, and Daniels and May. Yeah. And let's Let's not forget, Jaden Daniels is one of the top recruited quarterbacks in the nation when he came right. out. And he went to Arizona State, which was a cluster. And then he transferred out, and they were like, good riddance, get out of here. I, I, I remember watching him early in his career, and I was like, this guy's got potential. He's yeah. like, basically playing for Arizona State. He could play. 
but it was such a dysfunctional mess there. But it because Arizona State, dude. It's fuck yeah. Well, the the assistant coaches were giving the other teams the game plan so they could get fire Herm Herm Edwards. Right. Yeah. Jesus. So just just talking about neighbors for a second, because I wanted to I did want to talk about this. Is Marvin Harrison Jr. better than Malik Neighbors? You guys, what do you think? Wait, yeah. Derek up. sounds like he says yes. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I like Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't know. Statistically, well, is, he's not, obviously. Malik Neighbors had Jaden Daniels. <laughs> Right. So now we're yeah, uh, so we're gonna yeah. go back on uh, McCord and you're gonna be like, well, sorry. No. No, I I'll, I'll take well McCord had Marvin Harrison Jr. and Ubaka, right? Right. And he didn't that that should have been a put in at 40 points a game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I, I I mean I could see that. Like I guess the argument for McCord is is a good but Malik Na- Neighbors still statistically has killed it. And, you know, when you talk about NFL ready, he's definitely NFL ready. Yeah. I mean, how tall is he, though? Like, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a freak. He is. The height wise and his, his catch radius is what is crazy. And his speed, you yeah. know, because you got like Keon Coleman is tall too, but he's not as fast. Yeah, he's not fast at all. Yeah. Plus, I'm pretty, I mean, I'm just guessing, but I'm pretty sure that Harrison should be a very good route runner considering yeah. he's sad. So there's no scenario you would take neighbors above Harrison. Harrison's a once in generation. See, this is where you're getting um, Caleb Williams, Drake May here with these guys. <laughs> it's like, don't overthink this. Right. That's right. what happens. That's what happens when you do, you know, the, you have college games, they end, and then you got like a year or so before the draft. And then everyone second guesses everything. And it's like, right now, you should just be looking at the draft right now and go, this is who I'm taking. That's right now is the time to look. If you wait any longer and then you're like, hmm, that's when you got busts. Well, what about I want to hear your thoughts on Bo Nix because I have some thoughts on Bo Nix too. Um, He's been potential as a top 10 pick in in some of the drafts I've seen. Where would you take a a guy like Bo Nix? Second round. No, I, I I take him like somewhere in the mid first round, because honestly, there's quite a few teams that just need a quarterback, right? And, but I wouldn't take him top ten. But I guarantee you, there are teams that are thinking of if, if, they, if you know someone like Nix is there at nine, right? There's well, going to be a team that thinks about it because. He's going to probably have a good, you know, he's going to have some good tape. At the statistically, statistically, like find a better statistical quarterback. But it, yeah, the measurements though. I mean, I, I think, I think he checks a lot of boxes. I just, you know, I just, you know, it's just one of those things that he could be a second round quarterback. He could be a top, he could be a 10. Right. Based on almost need. Because once you get once you go past Penix, because Penix Penix is gonna be top ten, you know. You think you think Penix think, goes above Nix? I think it's probably. I don't think there's gonna be that big of a gap. I think you see Penix like at eight or nine, and then you see Nix at fifteen to twenty. So you're saying four, four? Or, wait, no, you're talking about five quarterbacks in the top twenty. So you're talking about Caleb. Daniels, Penix, or Drake May, Penix, and Nix. That's five quarterbacks. I'm going to throw in McCarthy, too, right? 
<laughs> well, I, nobody's no, 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 no. Get out of here. Get out of here, dude. Well, he's hey, not, he's not an NFL quarterback. And well, McCarthy has been mocked for being <laughs> in the top 25. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be, he's going to be, he could potentially be a first rounder, late first rounder. But still, that, I would say more he's a he's an early second right now. But did you think Levis was going to fall to the second round? Yeah, exactly. You know, Levis, but McCarthy, you know, this playoff might determine some positioning, whether he's a late first or he's like a first, mid first to a, to a you know, it's a late second. It depends. I mean, he's had the advantages of having a quorum in the running game, and his plays tailed off the last part of the season. I thought, I, I, you know, I thought midway through the season, I thought maybe he was a Heisman candidate, and then all of a sudden he just kind of tailed off. So, wait, who's this? McCarthy. Oh, McCarthy. yeah. Okay. No. Well, absolutely I think- not. I think with McCarthy is he's <laughs> not on a team that needs him to be great or right. what you know what I mean. So they're like Wes well, said, they have quorum. They have, all they need is a game manager. So we really don't know what you have in McCarthy. So okay, uh, so you take like a Tom Brady played for Michigan. You take like a Browning right now. They're talking about they're comparing that. Browning, who played yeah, but, a bunch of games for Washington as a game manager. Well, McCarthy has a pretty strong arm, though. He has he's made some nice NFL type throws. Now it's not a whole body of work because he's not in an air raid or something that we get to see him throw the ball forty right. times a game. And that's who I forgot. It might be Cam Ward going to um, um, Ohio State. Yeah, and so that was a, a none of the, none of the questions I had was uh, we're talking about Cam Ward. So we already know that Gabriel's probably going to Oregon, right? Yeah, I think he's already done it. I think it is. Right. But Riley Leonard went to Notre Dame. Cam Ward and who's the other one? Dante There's Moore. Another, yeah, Dante Moore, Cam Ward. Who's going to land at Ohio State, I guess, is the question. Well, I think it's one of those two. Um, I, we don't even know. Cam Ward might be going to the draft, right? I don't think it's it behooves him at, in this year. Right. Because there's so many. We just talked about five quarterbacks, maybe six, with J.J. McCarthy that but, may go in, in the first round. But is that about... See, for me, like Wes was saying, because of quarterback need, I'm talking about talent wise. There's only, I think there's only three first round quarterbacks. Would you take any of those six quarterbacks we just talked about above Cam Ward? Oh, I take the ones I think are first rounders. I take um, Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels above. So, yeah, yeah, Caleb Williams. Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, and J.J. McCarthy. Would you draft? I'd put, I'd put Ward fourth. So you put Ward above Bo Nix and J.J. McCarthy? Yeah, well, for Bo Nix and Penix, dude, they're like 100 years old. Well, I mean. <laughs> I mean, they're not that. <laughs> yeah. And I, look at no, the teams No, you know on, what? Right? No. <laughs> Is Sam Hartman. I think Sam Hartman, you know, he's not going to play in the bowl game because, you know, Sam Hartman's the next Joe Montana, right? He doesn't want to ruin his draft status. Oh, no, yeah, his draft status. What a ridiculous crap that is. It's like, no, I'm not going to play. It's like, no, go out there <laughs> and play, dude. Nobody, well, you, you're a good fourth round pick. I think for Cam Ward, I think it is best for him to transfer to one of these top schools. Whether it be like an Ohio State or a Florida State or you know one of those teams, and then go and 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 win a big bowl, maybe a championship, and then be a top five draft. 
you know. Because I think he has that potential. Right now, I don't know that um, anybody is better than Cam Ward, to be honest with you. If you said, I'm taking Caleb Williams, and I said, I'm taking Cam Ward, I'd be like, you know what? I'm probably good with that. Wow. I, it, the, compare, the, the things that people have been saying the last couple of days about Caleb, you know, I've heard some ridiculous stuff about, you know, what they think he is. Yes, he has a lot of talent. He can make a lot of the throws. But, I mean, someone even said Peyton Manning. I'm like, you high? No. I mean, Peyton there's a, Manning? They're totally, they're different, totally different players. Totally different players. It's like, did you see Peyton Manning running around in circles and throwing yeah. the ball to Tennessee? It's just, these <sighs> people have lost their minds when it comes to, yes, he's got a lot of ability. But he, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a give me, it's not a sure thing that he's going to really be you know, a, a, a Pro Bowl quarterback every year. No, he's not a pocket quarterback yeah. either. No. Well, isn't he comparable to Trevor Lawrence? Yeah, I would say he's a he's similar. Yeah. No, I mean, um, I mean, he's the number one pick. You can't really, unless he's, you're... He's got to be. Unless I mean, you're the Bears and you don't trade it and you don't want to get a quarterback, right? He, he's a, he's a, not as... He, he's a... He's a Lamar Jackson. My, you take away some uh, throw, or you add some throwing, take away some running from Lamar Jackson, and you have Caleb Williams. Yeah. You yeah, take I, a little bit of each of those, right? And you have Caleb Williams. Because because the best thing for me when you take Caleb Williams is you have that scrambling ability, dude. He gets out of the pocket and he gets and he makes first downs. It's like a, a better version of Mahomes is running because <laughs> you know how Mahomes always like somehow escapes and gets the first down. Caleb Williams is very similar to that. He he definitely doesn't throw the ball like Mahomes. Well, though, but but the, not even to compare that today they're comparing him to Mah- the way he throws the ball to Mahomes. Yeah, but the and, way he runs and scrambles. I mean, I mean you, that's oh that's a stretch saying he throws it like Mahomes. No, he does he's not. Got, he's got a good arm and he, he he's he's pretty accurate. But come on, let's just not even go to Mahomes territory yet. Well, I mean, he's a he's a not even a rookie yet. We can't say that. You can yeah. compare him and say he might be like him. <laughs> but Dude, what but about Derek's the... right? He's the number one pick, and he's got to be. He's got whether, whether Arizona wants to to write it out with with Kyler, whether the Bears want to write it out, it, the Patriots, it's a no brainer. Right. I mean, so, if you're the Patriots. It's just, you know, what what do you what do you you're, you you have to draft a quarterback if you're Patriots. You have to. Well, have that to. works out if the Bears decide they want to keep Fields. Yeah. Well, then they can be like, well, the Patriots are going to take Cable Williams. Who wants him? So if you're if you're the Bears right now, I mean you it really looks like schedule wise you get the number one pick. It, I mean if you look at what's happening, like, well they have a two game lead, right? Right, two games, and then you look at who uh, the Patriots play. Who they have a tough schedule, but you can't assume that the Panthers are going to win any games. What do you do? So, so let's say the, the you have to move down as the Bears, right? Do you do do you draft a quarterback? I, I, I think I think it's on it's in it's on their list. I mean, there's still that potential that you move from Fields. You know, I think that's a possibility. I just don't think it's very likely now. I, I don't well, see why you would. Because, well, I mean, let's – I don't want to get crazy here, but let's just talk about the Bears being one game out of the playoffs right now. Yeah. Well, it's not – it's – no, I was talking about it today with somebody. I said, I said you got the Bears and you got the Giants. They're both, you know, they're both in contention now. And, you know, if you're the Bears, I mean, everyone's talking about Ibukus is, is, is gone. Well, is that still the case here? 
Not if they come close to yeah. the playoffs. I don't think it's so. just it, that sucks for you, Steve. I know it, 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 it kind of it. It kinda does in a, in a sense because you know you got the number one pick there. I know you got two t- you got two picks. You have to trade down though, right? I mean, here, here's the thing. Uh, you should. I'm uh I'm t- I'm trading fields and taking Caleb Williams. But see, and you, you know why? Fields is a free agent in 2025. 20 after the 2024 season if you don't pick his fifth year option. No, that but means you, you have also to have him. a you can still tag him. Yeah, but the tag is like ridiculous for a quarterback. Yeah, it's like 16 million. No, it's more than that. Yeah, you, it you will be even more want, because of the contracts going up. You don't want to start tagging him because honestly, I think yeah, K- Caleb's a lot more polished and upside when it comes to throwing the football. Quarterback is thirty-two million for the tag. Jesus. Yeah, I, I thirty. And that was twenty twenty-three. So I thought I it was what... twenty. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's ridiculous. So, so that's yeah. where I'm saying I like Fields, but the problem is. The bear that means the bear's window is up in two years, right? They're not right. No, no. I mean, you gotta understand the bears have a hundred million dollars in cap room. So, yes, it would it hurt their other positions, could, but could they easily sign fields? Absolutely. That, that's not a problem for them. Yeah, I mean, there's just... we'll have 67 million. After the Montez Sweat deal. Well, yeah, Montez Sweat hurt him a little bit. Jeez. <laughs> and then I don't even know who's... Oh, uh, let's see. They're not really... Oh, well, your favorite. So Jalen Johnson, they would have to either let go or resign. I'm completely happy with letting Jalen Johnson go. <laughs> Uh, Mooney is a free agent. Yep, he can go. Yeah, um, especially Yon- if you're bringing a guy like Harrison, right? Right. Because then you got him for four years on a rookie contract. Yeah, they don't have that. It would just be Jalen Johnson, Santos, but who cares about a kicker, right? Right. And Yannick is a journeyman anyway, so you don't really want to pay him. So you would have to tie up. So if you had sixty-seven million, you'd have to tie up thirty million for Fields. Well, I'm not. I'm not against bringing in Caleb. Right. The problem is, is what can you get right for that pick? Well, they already did that once, and then that's still... what I'm saying. And they got the best haul you could ever get, right? So, I, I think it comes down to can I can can they get a haul out of it? If they can't, then maybe then you you think about that. But because I mean, if you're if you're uh, Arizona, if you're New England, like you got to go quarterback, right? I don't know. I mean, Arizona's got Kyler Murray. He, they already paid him. He's no different than Fields. He's, he's about the same. No, but that's not. He's not drafting a new quarterback, though. What? Well, I mean, yeah, but you're saying the Cardinals need to draft a new quarterback. They have Murray under contract for like three more years. Who do you think is more has more trade capital, Fields or Murray? Fields, because Murray's got the big contract already, right? Um, I mean, and I don't know what the cap hit would be for the Cardinals if they tried to trade Murray, because that'd probably be ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, it seems like it'd be a lot. <laughs> I mean, because you're only looking at 
you're really looking at New England, Arizona. They they're the only teams right there with Carolina close. Well, right. What isn't the Cardinals two and two since Kyle Murray came back? Yeah. So they've won a couple games. And then New England just won against the Steelers. Yeah. So they're hurting themselves. I think what who's the bottom in the AFC right now is New England's number one. And then everybody else is like five and eight, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. So there's really no other teams besides Arizona and New England for that top three pick. Yeah, uh, the Commanders, I think, have four wins. There are four. They have four wins. So if the, one of the other teams wins and they lose, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's. I get so here here's the question after for both of you. Talking about quarterback. Obviously, we all think Caleb Williams number one. Behind Caleb Williams, is there a big difference in quarterbacks and and who do you draft? Does it really matter at that point? Like think about who's coming out. We got Drake May. Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix, Bo Nix. Yeah, there's a that when you go from you got a lot of you have a, a there's a variety when you go start talking about Daniels, Penix, and Drake May because they're all different quarterbacks. It just it depends on what if I'm looking at the Patriots. I'm definitely going Drake May because it just fits them better. And then below that, it's just kind of like you know the Raiders. I could totally see Daniels. I don't see Penix. Um. So yeah, I just I just, I don't think it's it's kind of what kind of quarterback you want. You know. Well, looking at. The draft. So you have, the, okay, are we saying the Bears, <laughs> yes or no, on taking a quarterback? G- well, guessing. Let, let, let's say the Bears don't. Okay. Well, then, let's just say they keep fields. Okay, then you've got the Patriots. Well, then it would take Caleb Williams, right? Right. Or move up to take yeah. Williams in a trade right. or whatever. Cardinals, I think they're sticking with Kyler. You think stick with Kyler? Yeah. Commanders, are they sticking with Sam Hell? No. You really? You can't. I mean, he's had a terrible season. He's leading the league, or he's close to lead in 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 yards. I I think I think they stick with Hell. I think they might too. Honestly, I I think I think someone might pay the price for Caleb. I think they That's might so- I think the commanders might go O line. Yeah. I could see that. And then who, who who's after that? Hey man, it's the Giants. They got DeVito but, now. No, dude. They got the, the passing pies on. Wait, you just they don't paid, need a quarterback. You just paid Daniel Jones. <laughs> dude. And now you so got stupid. Danny DeVito. Daniel Jones is gonna be sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> So, do the can the Giants really take quarterback? No, no, they can't, right? No, they can't. They can't. So, next because you team, have a high paid quarterback and a decent. Then it's backup, the Raiders. Right? The so Raiders. Now you got the Raiders. The Raiders are in a really good position because to get they Jane might. Daniels. It's not. I would rather have Daniels. You have to. Go you're Jane not. Daniels. You're not going to pay the price to. You could pay the price and get Caleb. You, you don't no, want well, to do that. Yeah, you got yeah. Daniel. So maybe they move up, right? They trade their next year's first. It would be take, uh, what I've seen is like two first and two seconds. Right. Well, yeah. If, no. if you go up, Daniel. say so let's say the Bears have number one. Well, they could get Caleb. Well, they. Well, yeah, that's the idea. They can get Caleb and somebody else. 
think of Caleb and Marvin Harrison. Well, well, let's no, Marvin say that. Harrison will be gone. No, yeah, Marvin Harrison, I think, uh, well, not He's if... going to the Cardinals. Yeah. Well, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cardinals good. definitely draft Marvin Harrison. You're right. So we're already assuming the Patriots <laughs> taking Caleb. So, yeah, yeah, Raiders have to go Jaden Daniels. Oh, they have to. I would wrap – that's a great scenario because you're not giving up anything for him. Right. He's right. right you're there. taking him at your pick. But here's the yeah. problem. People are going to trade up. They're going to want awesome. to. Yeah. Well, who who's going to trade up though? Well, then you got, okay. So are we going Will Levis error in Tennessee? Is that who they're going to go with? I yeah. think you have to stick with that for me. at least a couple of years. Cause you're, he's on a rookie contract. Who's next, Derek? Who's next after Tennessee? The J E T S Jet Jet Jets. Oh, no, they, they, have to they gotta they gotta uh, take offensive lineman. No, no, you can. Oh. You're not gonna ride Zach Wilson next year. No, Aaron Rodgers is back. No, he no. You think so? Oh yeah. I mean, if Aaron Rodgers wasn't coming back next year, why would he be out there helping out yeah. Zach Wilson and doing all that stuff? All right, one more. Who's after the Jets? This one's not taking it either because that's the Chargers. Well, oh, wait, wait. Man. So the Jets are probably taking uh, the Penn State lineman. Yeah. Well, or or yeah. a Joe Alt, right? Or the yeah. Notre Dame guy. Unless, well, because you might have the Bears, right? The Commanders, and then the Jets, yeah. right? Well, you you know, one of them is taking fucking Kool Aid McKinnistry. That yeah. would be awesome for the Jets. Imagine <laughs> sauce with Kool Aid. Dude, come on! You have you have your 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 DBs are named Sauce and Kool Aid. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. They they uh, they might have to be like my favorite team if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and then okay, so Eleven's taking a quarterback. Okay, that's the Saints. Yes. You ha- yes. Yes. Well, okay. Okay. We have we yeah. have a taker. Wait, before we talk about the Saints quarterback, can we please talk about Derek Carr for a second? No, we can't talk about it. Dude. This guy had 37 what? yards passing going into the fourth quarter. Um, I don't know what's going on with him. It, it's 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 him, but as far as I'm concerned, it's also their effing coach. Yeah, it's it's not it's not just him. You can't be that atrocious with. They do it. It's not like everybody's hurt on their team. Alave wasn't, you know, or Alave was hurt, but he still was playing yeah. though. He played. Michael Thomas is out. Michael Thomas is hurt, but Alave played. Uh, Kamara played. I don't care. I mean. These are professionals. Thirty-seven yards. Thirty it, to the fourth quarter. You had thirty-seven yards passing. Yeah, he ended up with a, a two hundred, didn't he? Yeah, but it was a big fourth quarter, but still, dude. You playing the Panthers? Won, You're playing the Panthers. Yeah. The Panthers and you had thirty-seven yards. yards. So. I just so let, let's talk about the Saints because you have to draft a quarterback because Derek Carr is not the future. Yeah, and th- and then that's where you start getting into the debate about Penix, right? Yeah, because you're because Penix. you could sit there and get Penix, JJ, or you McCarthy. can go all in and try to get Caleb. So you, if think, I'm the Saints, and I know I this move is up? crazy, the Saints would take. I think they would go McCarthy. But what what if oh. they do they move up or do they draft where they got? I think they draft where they want, and I think they take McCarthy because they got Carr for like two more years at like thirty million a year, right? Yeah, and then they they put McCarthy behind him and and learn. Yeah, because you're not going to put Bo Nix and Penix need to start right away. Right, they're like twenty five. They're tw- getting old. <laughs> and well, they old. also have they they they're have game old. experience though. Like th- yeah. there is a there is a thing. When you talk about how many games you played in college, dude, 
This like Nix has been married what for five years? I mean, dude, what's going on here? Did you watch dude, that? The I'm guy's like, not that old. Let's let's just go. <laughs> let's just get it straight. Dude, and we heard like he babysits and landing this kid. It's not like the dude's forty. Come on. <laughs> Who was it? Chris Winky. <laughs> Chris Winky. They're not Chris Hart, Winky. Hartman's like forty, dude. No, he looks right. forty. Like he's you like you already got gray hair, year. man. You know who it is next year? Everyone forgets about him because he's been hurt. Cam Rising. Oh, yeah. Cam oh. Rising. Dude. He's playing Dude. again. He's playing next year. He's 27 years old. Yep. Cam Rising. Dude, 27. If, I got, if, if I'm picking at 13, 14, I'm totally looking at Cam Rising. <laughs> next year? Because yeah. you ain't getting him this year because he's playing in college again <laughs> at 27 years old. Hey, he'll be very experienced when he comes out. The, so, just separate from this, there was a comparison of Browning and uh, Tom Brady. Whoa. Come on, Ed. Just, just hold on for a second. It, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's a good comparison. But... Uh, Drew Bledsoe signed the largest quarterback contract ever. Oh, jeez. Joe Burrow signed dude, the largest blasphemy, dude. Contract, blasphemous. quarterback Bronius. contract ever. Dude, we're talking about Joe Cool, man. What are you talking about? We're not talking about Drew <laughs> hey, Bledsoe. Look, Drew Bledsoe went to a Come Super on, Bowl dude. lost. Right? Oh, no. Look, dude. Here, yes. Here, here, dude, they're the comparison. That's okay. He'll just go to the Raiders. Candy. I don't care. Get rid of him. We'll take him. <laughs> I'll take and Joe then, Cool. Then we'll be like oh. Joe Burrow is the same as Carson Palmer. Dude, Jay Our strong Carson, quarterback. Jay, Jay Browning is bring the up next Carson Thomas, Tom Gary. Brady. He is not Carson Thomas. <laughs> Jake Browning is the next Tom Brady. All right, that's great. He can go to the Vite. Dude, or even having. Wait. He's throwing to like Jamar Chase. Did Look. you see T. Higgins? Dude, he's like he's a freaking nature. Yeah. If they would just get him the ball, yeah, they it, would dominate. Look, here, here's the funny thing. When when Tom Brady took over for uh for Drew Bledsoe, they went 11 and 5, and then they won the Super Bowl against the Rams, right? Oh, they're you know what? They are dangerous. And That's right. They are. Cincinnati they, is about after they've won these two games with Browning are on the same track yeah. that when Brady took over yeah. at like six and five or whatever it was, and then won out and then won the Super Bowl. No. If, the, the issue is Tom Brady's Patriots were in the AFC East. Right, right, right. Well, let's say he gets a wild card, though. Gets in. I mean, hey, I, I, I'm and just I, saying the, the the stats are out there. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about, you know, who they need to start talking about is Tommy. Tommy Good. DeVito. Is that that's who you're talking about? Dude. Yeah. That Tommy dude, DeVito. The five and eight Giants. That's who you're that, talking no, about. No, no. Did you? That dude's got wheels. He is not slow. Did you see him take off? I was like, dude. He can run. He his can mama's run. pork cutlets, man. Did, did you hear? Did him? you see his agent? Yes. Did you see his agent? <laughs> I thought it was like Rocky movie, dude. <laughs> he was his agent was like admitted into the Boston like Italian mafia, <laughs> something like that. Did you see that? I didn't see that. It's I heard hilarious. something about the mafia today. I was just like laughing, but. Somebody on ESPN, I don't want to say it's Nick Wright. I hate Nick Wright, but somebody was talking about how DeVito looked like Mike Vick <laughs> against the Packers. Because he was awesome. running Mike Vick, but he, he was running all over him. He's got some wheels. I mean, I he's like a you know, he you didn't see a lot of him because he played one year for Illinois. Right. And I watched a little bit of him and I didn't really think much. I was like, all right, but he didn't play. He didn't play a lot of college ball, you know? So, but 
Jake Browning did and Tom yep. Brady did. And they were both late to not drafted picks. I'm wow. Telling you, I mean, Jake Browning may be the next Tom Brady. Look okay. out. The, we're we are we are breaking of course we're gonna get <laughs> listeners now because but, it's yeah gonna be did the brady headline. play that much in college he played uh 36 played games because i thought drew henson t- took the job from yeah. him no he still played uh over yeah except at 35 36 games wait a minute oh we're talking about brady yeah yeah well yeah but brady, browning brady played was... like 50 games brady won the orange bowl yeah, no. I mean, Brady played like, a lot of games. Yeah, because uh, so what the, the 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 comparison they were making with both of these was obviously the high paid stuff and taking over at certain places. But one of the things they said about Browning was he was a seasoned college quarterback, which helps you. Yeah, because he started when, as a freshman. Yeah, when you go to the NFL, you've played a lot of games mm-hmm. before that. Yeah, and he you, underachieved completely at right. Washington. But you learn how to read defenses, like you learn how to be a game manager. Yeah, it, it, you play in a pro style offense, right. like they did. I mean, everyone makes a big deal about some of these quarterbacks. They go to the Pac-10. <clears throat> they seem like they underachieve. They don't do. They don't win the way they should win. But it's the Pac-12. That's what the Pac-12 does. Right. Everyone beats up on everybody, even though the conference isn't that good some years. You're still playing a pro style offense. It prepares you for the NFL. And I didn't think much of Browning when he was there, but again, you know the the Vikings obviously didn't think much of him because they got rid of him. Right, but he's not. Yeah. They're they're not like the the Bengals are still could definitely easily make playoffs now. They could do some damage in the playoffs right. if Baltimore gets the home field. And look at the Dolphins. I mean. You lose to Tennessee. I, you, you're, but you're talking about the Dolphins maybe getting to the S. They got to go on the road against Baltimore. That does not look well for them. And then you go beyond that. The Chiefs look like crap. Horrible. I mean, Horrible. And, and, and I, I'm a little scared of the Browns a little, but mm. the Bengals, but the Bengals, the Bengals, not scared kind of the in Browns. that territory. They can travel. I think they can travel. And do some damage in the playoffs. Um, I, I I think you need to be worried about the Bills making a run. Well, yeah, that's that's a given. But they the just Bills are going to make in the run, playoffs. Man. They're coming back. They are, but they get, they still got to get in the playoffs. Right. They're, they're on the out. They're on the severe outside. No, like, I mean they they're, they're, they'd the be a, a low wild card. Like they're coming in seventh or sixth. But they have to you be, imagine being the two seed and you have to play Buffalo in the first oh, round. Dude, oh, no, no way. No, they way. are gonna wreck that. <laughs> yeah, no way. Well, and then the the way the Chiefs are playing right now, dude, the Chiefs are trash. Dude, they just don't look good. Dude, so bad. They don't look good. So you see how Mahomes is like whining, and it's like, oh, oh dude, I we're gonna talk about that in a second. So let's get into NFL. But before we get into NFL. We're going to do a little trivia. Oh, no. So, you are, we know uh, the Raiders took a kicker in the first round recently. Who was their last recent kicker in the first round? It was Janikowski. Janikowski. Do you know what pick they drafted him? 18. 18. Close. West. 17, somewhere around there. Oh. They're got it. Like, they're probably 15. Do you know what the highest kicker ever drafted was? Round and and pick? I don't know. I don't know. Second round, probably. Well, first round. Well, yeah. So there's someone higher than Janikowski. Was it, was it, was Janikowski. It was someone was it, higher it, than it, Janikowski. Are we talking about pick kickers or punters too? Kickers. Just kickers, because there's a couple punters on the list. No. Six, number six overall was the highest kicker kicker ever. Is this kicker in the Hall of Fame at least? No, he's not, because that's what we're talking about next. Here's the trivia question Name the five kickers in the Hall of Fame. Oh, God, dude. 
Uh, Jan Stenerud. Jan Stenerud is in there. Yes. George Blanda. George Blanda is in there. Um. Um. That's two. Morton Anderson. Morton Anderson. That's three. The last two are tough. Well, the the two, uh, one of the last two is tough. You guys should definitely get one of these. Chris Barr, no. Uh, Gary Anderson, no. Um, you won't get the, you won't get this one, Lou Graza. Oh. You won't get that one, but the, the last one you guys should get. How late, long ago was it? Uh, let's see. Well, he he punt he punted as well. I'll give you that. Oh. And he was a raider. Ray Guy? Ray Guy. There well, that's what go. I was at. I, I didn't know he was a kicker. He was a kicker. Yeah, what did he kick? Yep, he kicked and punted. I, huh. I didn't know that because I would have said Ray Guy. I thought we were talking to just kick. That's why I, you know, I didn't know he kicked. But, you know, what's funny is uh, there was only uh, three or four total first-round picks ever for kickers. Well, yeah. Yeah. Why would you? And Janikowski. Scott Norwood. Was Scott Norwood one of them? No. (laughs) Yeah, Scott Norwood was one of them. Were there anybody that was better than Janikowski? No. Well, there was nobody after. Most of them were in the 60s and 70s. Oh, yeah. So Mark Mosley? (laughs) Mark (laughs) Mosley. Because, you know, (laughs) what brought this up was because Moody this year, he was drafted higher than a lot of the kickers or anybody ever. So. Well, wasn't it um, Roberta Gaiwa? Gaio was the last, right? He was he the sucked. last one in the second round or something. Yeah, yeah, he was like the first pick of the second round or something crazy yeah. like that. And he's he like didn't even last. He was horrible. See, I would think. Okay, so I don't know if he's eligible yet. Vinatieri should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, Jason Hansen should be in the Hall. Speaking of, of Vinatieri, most field goals made ever. Adam Venteri, number one, 599 field goals made in like 370 games. All right. This dude's averaging a field goal and a half a game. Uh, I think Morton Anderson was right behind him. But yeah, Venteri was killing it. So he'll, he'll definitely be in the Hall of Fame. All right, so we're getting the NFL. We got our top five list. So what we're talking about before we get into our picks for this week, we're going to go top five NFL players ever. Whoa. Oh, no. Did you, you not didn't make your list the, out, Wes? Did you not get the list, Wes? I didn't get the list. Oh, oh dude. Wes. He even put that in the text, Wes. I put it in the I put it in the text, Wes. We're going top five NFL players ever. Derek can start. Let me check my notes from a couple years ago. <laughs> are we doing just do I just do my top five or are we going in order? Uh, we're we gonna go with? number five. Okay. My number five is a little outside the box, but I'm going Anthony Munoz. Wow. Left tackle for the Bengals. Wow. 11 time all pro. Yeah. That's a that's that's a great pick. I could uh, I can get I can get aboard with that. My number 5 is Lawrence Taylor. Talk about sacks that they can't even count. 
these days because he'd be the number one overall. Mm-hmm. Tackles, he'd be the number one overall. So I think uh, defensively, Lawrence Taylor was a beast. So I, I got to have to have to put him in my top five. <laughs> yeah, Wes off the top of the head. Yeah, Wes. Yeah, Joe Montana. Okay. I mean, a lot of rings. Like, that's it's hard to argue. Yeah. Give us, give us your reasoning. Is this a big game quarterback? You know? Oh, a lot of big games. What Super Bowls? Um, he, what people don't remember is he didn't have Jerry Rice for two of those Super Bowls. Yeah, Dwight yeah. Clark though. I mean, but he didn't have the deep threats. He 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 really he used that offense. I mean, he had Wendell Tyler, he had Dwight Clark, but he had to really use his legs. Um, you know. He had to distribute the ball. I mean, I could have, I could definitely put Joe Montana up there. I mean, I like that. I like Joe Montana there. How about number four? I'll start here. And this is probably a little bit arguable. But I'm going to take Jim Brown at number four. I could have taken him higher. I definitely could take Jim Brown higher. Statistically, like awards-wise, I don't know that there's much better than Jim Brown. But the whole era thing for me, for him, he was just a man among boys. It's kind of like not even fair. But I got Jim Brown at number four, like a nine-time All-Pro. The rushing average, the rushing yards, the statistics. He could be higher, but I'm going to put him at four. I I get it. It's like it's hard because I watch old film. I really not never watched an old game. It's one thing I haven't – I've seen so many old games. I haven't seen an old Jim Brown game like live on YouTube. Well, we'll go, what, what do you got, Derek? We'll, we'll give Wes some time to uh, – I got LT. All right. I mean, we already talked about sacks and tackles. Like, what he makes did, LT the best? He also did pass coverage. He also yeah. um, had interceptions and forced fumbles. <laughs> he was what everyone wants your defensive best defensive player to be. Is, is there a better defensive player than LT? <laughs> The only one, no, I don't think so, but <laughs> closest would be Reggie White. Not, not Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders did one thing good. And that was cover. He also returned kicks pretty well. Right, yeah, but he couldn't tackle. Right. I mean, he that was the whole thing. I remember that's like a the game plan is to run to Deion's side. But not like a uh, Joe Green, Reggie. I mean, I think people forget about him. Yeah, I think Reggie. He's pretty. And Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith was. I think he was more of a. He was good, but he was more of a compiler, also. Yeah, yeah I mean, Ed Reed. I would put Ronnie Law to head up Ed Reed. Yeah. I, I really. Would, yeah, dude, Ronnie Lott wasn't all. It was a Pro Bowler at corner, free yeah, safety, corner. and strong safety. Yeah, the dude could play at every position. He started at corner. But he played the Super Bowl as a rookie as a cornerback. 
I mean, I'm not arguing. I'm just wondering if there are any better defensive players in LT that we could think of. Well, it, my – I mean, I don't think there is, personally. Like, I put LT, I think, is the best defensive player ever in the yeah, NFL. I do, too. I, I can't think of anybody that's comparable to him. When it comes to an outside edge linebacker, of course, I like Ray Lewis, but that's a different player. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, Ray Lewis is up there for me for sure. Yeah. I mean, I probably if you're just just talking defense, Ray Lewis is top five for sure, <laughs> but not number one. No. What about your guy Butkus? No. I mean, I I don't even put him ahead of Singletary. No. Different era. But you mean you we talk about Bears middle linebackers. Erlacher. You gotta talk about Erlacher. Erlacher. You talk about the butt kiss, you talk about Singletary. Those are three of the best <laughs> middle linebackers. Real cool. Oh, I mean, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> and the one you trade away. All right, Wes, what do you got it for? I got Taylor to four. Yeah. I mean, I just can't think of anybody that is I, – I, I I can think of maybe a Derek Thomas back in the day, but he was nothing compared to Taylor. Taylor was just a wrecking ball. And the motor that he played with – Yeah. And – He had a lot of cocaine too. Yeah. I mean, that could, be, that could have <laughs> contributed. But that was – hey, what was that? Hey, remember uh, – Daniel LaRusso in best line of the week. Hey, it's the 80s. <laughs> Stay off a crack. It's the 80s. Yeah, crack. Oh. oh, that's why he's at four. That's why he's not at one. He's, <laughs> so he's not at one. Alternate. He could be at one. Yeah. All right, let's go to three. Derek, why don't you lead us um, off here? Now, this one prefaces on. I would have Jim Brown here, except I've never, like Wes said, I've never really seen him play. I know he's great, but who I have seen play and mesmerized me is why I got Barry Sanders at three. I mean, you, I mean, it, I, Barry Sanders could be number one. Well, you saw the thing about, I know it's college, but you saw what I, Sent yeah. about his oh his his Heisman season. season. Come on, dude. Nobody. What, dude? You're rushing for two, three hundred yards a game, and then you do it in the NFL. I mean, Barry on a is, bad yeah. on a super bad team. <laughs> there's there's a lot of argument for Barry being number one. Um, I don't think number three is a terrible place. But I have Tom Brady here. And I don't think Tom Brady's the best quarterback you've ever seen, but he won a lot of championships. He played the game right. And, uh, you know, and he, he has a stronger arm than people realize. And I think uh, he didn't get a lot of credit where credit was due. I think uh, a lot of times credit went to his coaching staff where I think Tom Brady deserves to be here at number three. (laughs) Yeah. I got, I got Jerry at three. The greatest receiver of all time. I mean, when it comes to overall over the years. Unequivocally. So, I mean, but just football player, when you think about it. I mean, just for so many years, he just played at such a high level that you're probably not going to see that from a skilled position player. Just because of the, you look at running backs, they don't have the longevity anymore. They only play for eight years. 
And, you know, the receiver position, you see some guys that who should have been the best, like Megatron, but he only played so many years. You know, what's interesting is you'll see Jerry Rice's records get broken, right? <laughs> yeah. Just like you saw Jordan's records get yeah. broken. Because why? The game changes, right? Yeah. There, there's guys that are freaks like Marvin Harrison Jr. And there's going to be more guys like Tyreek Marvin Hill, Jr. who, yeah. if he stays healthy for the next how many years... He's going to break, break a lot of records, right? Yeah. I don't know. His are pretty untouchable. You got to realize he played. Well, everybody thought Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's points record was untouchable. <laughs> right, but you had to have a freak like a ball. It's not yeah, like right. everyone's doing it. It's like no, I'm just saying that eventually you're going to have, especially the way the games change these days, it's a passing game. Eventually, you're going to have some freak wide receiver that's going to break all of Jerry Rice's records. Yeah, but wouldn't you have to? I mean, I could see that, yes. But isn't I don't think a ton of people are because the thing no, is, is, there's it's only not like, one person you know, that broke Kareem's records, too. It's not like, you know, Steve Largent's record for what was it? Yeah. When he had the record, right? 147 and, receptions or whatever. Yeah, and then everyone broke it. Right. The dude played for what? 20... 15... What was the year? Almost 20 years. The NFL is changing, though, to a, a, a passing game. Like, it's already changed, right? Yeah, right. but you also look at guys like Marvin Harrison, really. You know, guys like that could do it, but they also have to stay healthy. Right. You thought Randy Moss would do it. He tailed off. I mean, he he didn't have. He, he also retired early. Yeah. But look at Jamar well, Chase. He he tailed off though. He Jamar off. Chase, dude, could break a lot of records. Jerry, I mean, like Randy Jerry, Moss went to the Niners and Justin the Jefferson. Tennessee Titans. Yeah. And all these, and then no, Jefferson, Jefferson could Jefferson's break a lot of records. Record. Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is going to wreck some. He's going to break. Right. I think so. But the, so the, here's the thing. Let's say Marvin Harrison Jr. comes in though, dude, and then starts going for a thousand yards from his rookie season on. Then he would need 23 seasons to right. break Jerry Rice's record. Or maybe he goes for 2,000 yards for the first five seasons. Like, you know, like I'm just saying it's a different league. Right. But Rice has 22,895 right. receiving. No, it's, I'm not saying it's easy to beat. Kareem Abdul Jabbar had 30,000 points. Right. <laughs> that's a hard thing to beat. Well, that's what I'm saying. You need someone that has, right, who can be consistently good longevity for 20 years. Right. Yeah. And LeBron James is the only guy who will ever do it. Everybody talks about the next LeBron James. No, you'll never have that. Like it, it's rare for these people to come in. But does it mean it won't happen? Of course it will happen. Every But here's also Rice retired in 2004. Yeah, it well it's been played, almost 20 years. He played a couple extra seasons too that you didn't think he was going to play. Well, it says you know he played but he didn't really play for the Seahawks right. and then he no. 2004. Yeah, touchdowns. <laughs> 2004 was his last year. Right. So that's almost 20 years ago now, and no one's gotten close to him. I, I, I just, I mean, when did Jabbar retire? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 80, 89. Right. So it took LeBron James 40 years to do it. Right. So you'll you'll do. It. I mean, every record was meant to be broken, right? Ernie Nevers, his <laughs> six Ernie touchdowns Nevers. in the Thanksgiving game, rushing touchdowns. It'll That's from nineteen thirty nine. I'll never be broken. Nineteen thirty nine. Come on, that's pretty a uh, long time ago. Yeah, I, I think somebody will eventually break it because of the way. The league is changing. 
It's it's just not a running league anymore. Like it's just a passing league. Is anyone going to break Emmett Smith's record then? Probably not. I don't. I I think that's probably one that will stand. Because who they're not even run, and they're running with two and three running backs now. Right. So you're never going to have guys running for that many yards anymore. That's probably way more likely to stand than Rice's uh, yards record. Well, I want to see here if anyone's. I don't think anybody's even going to come close. (laughs) Yeah, right now, no one in the. Like, name a, a running back right now that could have a, even a chance of that. No, I mean, that's just... No one has longevity. Look, at Derrick Henry's already right. fallen off. And he he's probably at half of those yards. 13,000 compared to Emmett's 22,000. 18. Emmett had 18,355. Two thousand, almost two thousand more than Walter Payton. Frank Gore was third now. Right, he came close, and he played for like twenty three years. Exactly, that's what you have to do. Right. Uh, wait, do we get a number three from Wes? Yeah, it was yeah, Rice. 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 Oh, Rice. Okay, so we got number two. So I want to hear your number two, Wes. I got to say Brady. I go with Brady here. It's hard. A lot of rings. It's just just the winning, the amount of winning. He went to half the Super Bowls in his (laughs) career. Right. I mean, he played for 20 years. He went to 10 Super Bowls. He won seven. And you look at the you look at the coaching, you look at when he is gone, you saw what a difference impact he made on those teams. It was him. And it's not like he had a he had a year or two with Randy Moss. That's about it. That was his biggest weapon. You know? Bronk. Again, it's Gronk a was a good weapon. And and the thing is, I'm not. It's kind of like Kelsey, and it's like I, I'm talking about traditionally. Montana had Rice, Aitman had Irvin, um, Bradshaw had Swan and Stallworth, and Brady had Moss, I guess for one year. Edelman was great, but still yeah. Edelman. He had a bunch of short white guys. It, yeah, Bouts had Winslow. Bouts had it. No, we have to go to Bouts. <laughs> Bouts. Bouts, had... Bouts put up a lot of yardage. I mean, yeah. No, I, I, I... Mood had Ernest Givens. Trust me. There's they were no... Jeffries. I would love to put Marino at two. I can't. It's got to be pretty. Okay. He's got Marino at one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's got Marino <laughs> I, I mean, I got, I got Barry five. Sanders at two. Uh, because, I mean, statistically, Barry Sanders was still great. But physically, in the eye test, there is nothing better you will ever see at running back than Barry Sanders. So if he would have played longer... Because he could have. You got the most humble, best running back that we've ever seen in the league. And so I, I you have to go Barry Sanders here. Do I think Jim Brown statistically beat him? Probably. Awards-wise, probably. But when you look at the way Barry ran the ball, the way he played the game, got to be the best running back ever got to be at number two what do you got at two Derek Brady 
most most wins, most completions, most passing touchdowns, yards. passing yards. <laughs> yeah, mean. most Super Bowls. Yep, tied for the longest touchdown pass in NFL history at ninety nine yards. Ninety nine yards <laughs> to a white guy. <laughs> We're not being racial here, just saying. I mean, who's going to break his yardage record? Dude. Fine playoffs? He Doesn't he have 100,000 yards? Dude, he's got uh, – this guy, could, he threw from New York to L.A. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he – it's it's hard. Yeah, I mean – can't argue it. Yeah, Tom Brady easily up there. All right, number one. Let's go right back to Derek. Gotta be Rice. I mean, 10 time All Pro, one second, or first team, one second team in 2002, three years before he. Re- Two years before he retires, he's an all pro. He most risk career receptions, most career receiving years, most touchdowns, receiving touchdowns, most total touchdowns, most all purpose yards. Hard yeah. to argue. <laughs> well, Wes, since you already said Rice, how do you argue that? I I did see the list when I woke up, but <laughs> it was so mind blowing that I thought my head's gonna explode actually thinking of this list because it's kind of ridiculous. It's hard. Five is hard. It, it it one's hard because I got Barry Sanders. And because uh, it's not just the stats, this his college stats are ridiculous. Yes. But he did things that I thought maybe this was almost, this was like 30 years ago that there would be another running back to do some of the same things. And there hasn't been a running back even close to do the, I just, what you saw in the field, you haven't seen a running back even close to doing what he's done. It's amazing what he did with nothing. Right. Talk about Brady. He still had the advantages. We talk about Montana. We talk about Rice. They had advantages. LT was just a wrecking ball. But Barry didn't have, he didn't have a line. He had nothing. He had nothing. And he still, the people, he still almost got to the Super Bowl. They were one game away from the right. Super Bowl. Yeah. And rushed for 2,000 yards. <laughs> yeah. I really wanted Walter. I want to pick Walter. No. But I can't. You can't put him on that list. Yeah. can't. But if you watch the football player, what Walter did, he's kind of the same way but different. Dude, Barry Sanders, the, the way he moved in the back, like you don't have people like they're already pressing into your backfield. <laughs> you're, you're making moves in the backfield. That's tough for a running back because that throws off the way you're, you're the whole play, right? You're like, yeah. I'm going to run a, a 34 dive. Well, you can't run a 34 dive when the four hole has been blown yeah. up. I guess I'll run a 36. Yeah. Four you're going to be like, I'm going to do a hop outside 30, and a spin back around. And so I, well, I we'd didn't... have to do all those because they'd all be filled up. And, yeah. right. like, oh, man. Yeah. And, then... and, and then you flip around, you do the uh, end around. So I definitely like I I obviously I had Barry Sanders at two, but after all the things that Barry Sanders do, I still have to put Jerry Rice at number one as well. Because there's I don't know. I you know I tried to I'll make an argument for it that it's a passing league and we're gonna see a lot of receivers go go and come in, in and out, but will anybody ever do what Jerry Rice did? I don't think so. I, I don't statistically. I don't think they can. Yeah, it's it's so hard. Well, 
I mean, he was, he's, and I know Wes doesn't want to hear this. That's why he had to leave because <laughs> he put money on this. But the closest to an MVP by a wide receiver was Jerry Rice. Right. I think he won, like, it was not the AP or something. He won a somebody's thing for MVP. That's the closest any wide receivers ever come. Right. Well, and, and you know, because it's a longevity thing and it's a <laughs> it's a consistency thing that Jerry Rice had that you, I don't think you'll ever see again at the wide receiver. And you talked about Emmett Smith's stats. And I and don't get me wrong, Emmett Smith's stats are great. Yeah. But nobody will ever have an offensive line like Emma Smith had. Never. So you'll never have a running back ever come close to that. You'll have people compete for Jerry Rice's stats, but they won't ever hit him. It, it's almost impossible. So Jerry Rice has to be, I think, number one as well. So here's here's my top five. Let's just give our top five. LT, Jim Brown, Tom Brady, Barry Sanders, Jerry Rice. Munoz, LT, Sanders, Brady Rice. Montana, Taylor, Rice, Brady, Sanders. Sanders. So that's our uh, HSC top five. That, that was a hard one. I got to tell you. I changed out my top five like three or four times. I had Gail Sayers in my top five at one point. I, well, I, had, Bo- I had Brown and Montana <laughs> or my six and seven. Yeah. So. Oh, Montana definitely was up there. I was trying to think. Uh, and so, Derek, when you put Munoz in there, I was the same. I had that same thought process. Um, one of the, I think one of the most underrated offensive linemen ever was Jonathan Ogden. That guy was a beast. Yeah. Well, when I was looking at the list, I was like, I want to have an offensive lineman represented. So right. I went through tons of lists, and it always had Munoz as the top yeah. offensive lineman. Because I was thinking, you know, Upshaw. I was thinking, um, what's his name? Uh, why can't I think? Uh, Bruce Matthews, I was thinking. Right. Yeah, Bruce Matthews. Oh, really I was good. thinking, you know. Yeah, and there were some others, and I was like, "Oh, but," and then I was like, "Well, Munoz is pretty good." Yeah, yeah it's interesting. You know, there, it was hard to put a lot of defensive players in there too. Right. Well, I, like I, looking... I wanted to put Dion up there. I think Dion was a very, very good. Yes, not the best tackler, but when you talk about coverage, interceptions, kick returning. Pretty good, you know, DB. I was looking at, like, for DBs, um, Dion was there. And underrated because you forget, like, before he was a Raider, but he was really good was Mike Haynes, uh, Ronnie Lott, Ed Reed. Um, yeah, I, I, I took Dion out just because of the tackling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to put him in there when you're not a all around, yeah, hitting hitting every part of your position. Well, because you know, for like a brief moments, Daryl Revis was the greatest corner. Of all oh time. yeah, because it was all about Revis Island, right? Yeah, I mean, Asamoa for like two. Th- you know, they had there's <laughs> Troy Palomalu you know. doing some crazy stuff. Yeah, there were corners and stuff that had like two or three great years and then but then they fall off Dion was for a long time um rod woodson uh, changed his career went from corner to safety about charles woodson yeah what's charles woodson night train lane 
Um, also, you know, I was thinking of Alan Page. Alan Page is Alan MVP. Page is on my list. All right, well, let's go. Let's get into our picks. Let's talk Wes about. Uh, He's got his picks ready. You guys ready? No, but okay. I gained some uh, some ground. I'm not back picking the same week. as West this week. Let's just say that <laughs> I gained some ground back with. Uh, you guys were both seven and eight, and I went ten and five, so three games. I'm telling you this right now. I'm going all <laughs> gut now because two weeks in a row, I was the week before. I was like, "Hmm, should I take the Cardinals?" And then you guys laughed at me, thinking I was going to take the Cardinals. Last week it was the Patriot. This Patriots. I was like, "Hmm, should I take the Patriots?" Got laughed at. This week, no more. I don't care. I'm just taking my picks. Well, let's let's first talk about uh, week fourteen. We'll spend a lot of time on it, but uh, a couple surprises, I guess, or game big games. Uh, I think Chicago beating Detroit. We all had Detroit there. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that was a killer, but Chicago, I mean they played up tough good. the last time. It looked pretty good. And here's a crazy thing. I mean, let's just talk about Chicago being one game out of the playoff hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the, they're gonna they're not gonna make the playoffs, but they're gonna win enough games that Eberflus stays. Right. Yeah. It's it's Probably. pretty wild though, when you're like Chicago's one game out of the playoff hunt. Yeah, let's look. Okay, they've got the Browns, Cardinals, Falcons, Packers. They All winnable games. Particularly tough schedule. <laughs> no. I mean, those are I mean, they I don't want to say four winnable games, but at least three. They could win those all or lose those all. That's I wouldn't be surprised at either well, of those. I mean, because it is Chicago, so let's just not get it twisted. It, it, it is Justin Fields. Justin Fields could run the table, or he could run around and lose the ball. <laughs> yeah, or he could break the table. <laughs> or, or they could throw 20 screens in a row. Yeah. But still surprised to watch them go in and just literally manhandle Detroit. Like Detroit looked really bad. Yeah. Um, well, and I then like let's the, see the the Jets and Houston. I mean, come on. Well, Stroud got hurt. Zach Wilson going off for three hundred yards. <laughs> Yeah, Jets fans are going to lose their minds because Dude. if they keep him, it's going to be like that for the rest of – he sucks. Oh, he's good. He sucks. He's good. They're going to lose their minds. We're all going to. Yeah. You can't take it at each week. Uh, the Buffalo-Kansas City game, I think – okay, yeah, we got to talk about this for a second. Let's talk about the offsides. Okay, so ooh, ooh. Here, let me give you guys my thoughts on the offsides for one second. So first of all, you he didn't check with the 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 uh, line judge, which you always do as a receiver. You always check, right? When you're the last guy in the line, you always check. The argument is, and the Chiefs' argument is, is that. He wasn't warned. But here's my thing. Do they ever warn a defensive end when he's lined up offsides? No. They don't be like, hey, defensive end, you're offsides. Move back. Did they warn the Bills that they had too many men on the field on that no. field goal? Like, so, well. but you never you never warn a defensive player. So when they say they didn't warn us. I'm like, that's the most ridiculous argument I've ever heard because that's not their job to warn you. It's your job to check down the line. Yeah. Well, um, 
the thing that I heard today is they went through the whole game and he actually did it five times. They did it multiple times. He did it on the second play of the game. And he didn't get a warning. But at the same point, it's just something that it's it's your responsibility to look. And he didn't look. All those times he lined up, he didn't check, he didn't check with the ref. He was just he was oblivious. So it's it's on them. I mean, you can't it's not the ref's job to tell you, oh, sorry, you're off sides. Right. It's not I mean, walking the ball. Dude, it's your job to line up yeah. in your position. Well, the problem also on that play is Jawan Taylor, of course, was well, not yeah, he on the was line. not on the line either. But, but they, if you're a defensive end, Derek, have you ever had a line a line judge be like, hey, defensive end, you're off you're off sides, back up. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who was it in our game? Remember, they they did that to us. They screwed us. We remember, I forgot who it was, Stefan or somebody went like this, pointed and asked if he was on the line. Right. Or was it uh, Josh Shaw? Uh, Greg Shaw. Greg Shaw, I yeah. think. And then they said he, yes. they and then they flagged they, him. They flagged him. But that's, that's, but it, 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 yes, if you ask and then you get flagged, that's different. He didn't ask, but the same time as the defense is never warned. So when your argument is they didn't warn us, that's not well, a good argument. Remember McLaurin last year, they flagged him and he did. Right. When it. he checked, right, right. At the end of the game. After just, he checked. Yeah. I'm just tired. Listen here, Kansas city. <laughs> You've gotten so so many calls go your way and the one time you don't get a call you throw a temper tantrum maybe come over to the world of the raiders who get screwed over by calls all the time for like centuries Ooh, boo hoo you get one call against you and you're just like maybe you play better i don't agree with anything that because Here's the problem is I hear all these sports analysis talking about how the Chiefs are in the right. Yeah, there, there's there's the people that sit there and they try to say, well, and that should have warned them. They should have, yeah. And <clears throat> but the one the when the ref came back, he said, We're we don't have to, and not only that, he's blocking the ball and he's not looking over. So what's he supposed to do? Throw something at him? Right. Like, hey, <laughs> right. On the line. He's supposed to run out, he's tap him over. on the helmet and be like, hey, Tony, you're but off he, sides, bro. The only thing that I thought of is because he was the inside guy. All right. He's a slot in that situation. The thing is, isn't it the outside guy? He's isn't the outside he, guy. I thought he was the inside no, guy. No, he's the outside guy. He's the guy on the line. There's nobody the outside, outside of him, of him. dude. And that he's, play, there's he, another guy outside of him. He's the guy outside. He's the furthest out. Which is why he's offsides. Because he's supposed to be on the line of scrimmage. He wasn't the... There was a slot on the other side of him farther back. Yeah, But it's not... He, but he's not the outside guy on the line that he's right, not but the, the slot guy should have been like hey dude you're off sides yeah but, but well, see, sure but, but he, he's right because that guy is not on the line so right. he doesn't have to check with he doesn't have to check his no he doesn't have to check at all he doesn't care yeah. he's not on the line screen it's a little confusing formation because the outside usually the farthest outside guy is on the line and the slots off the line that's part of the problem too I mean, here's here's the thing. It's not the ref is ref's job. It's not their job to that's make just, sure that's you're what, lined yeah. up. You could sit there and we could sit there and say they should have the ref should. At the end of the day, the responsibility falls on the receiver, right? And then if you check with the ref, he would have told you you're offsides. 
Wasn't it funny though when Tony complained during the play? He got pissed that he didn't. He was wide open and he didn't get the ball. And he's like this. He throws his arm down, and Kelsey gets the ball right. And then he, and he throws, throws it to him. The, he didn't even think he was going to get the ball. That's What's crazy is that they <laughs> scored a touchdown on the most wild play. But but I got to hand it to Kelsey because Kelsey he improved all that. No, and he threw a dime too. That was a dime. And Tony wasn't like Tony kind of just sat there. He didn't know what was happening. It's like he's wide open. He's like, here's the ball. I mean, I'm looking at the picture and it's so bad. And that's why it got called. He's so far off sides. His back foot is where the other receiver on the other side's right. front foot is. is on the line. Yeah. yeah. The the ball's literally in between his feet. Yeah, if you look across the line, so bad. And then what's awesome is the other side. So his back foot is where the other receiver's front foot is. The other receiver's back foot is where Juwan Taylor's front front foot is. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. It's like, dude, it's like a whole mess. uh, Apparently, Juwan Taylor all year doesn't have to follow the rules of being on the offensive line. So. They've already let that one go. Yeah. That's but why they're so, so that one was crazy. So we had to talk about that. And then so let's talk about Dallas Philly for a second. Uh. <laughs> I mean San Francisco literally comes out and says Philly was exposed and Philly had a bunch of comebacks, clapbacks, and then just gets killed by Dallas. So what's what's happening with Philly right now? Well, it's what I was going to say about the Lions. They're going through their season lull right now. I mean, the 49ers, everyone thought they were horrible, right? When they went, they lost three straight. I think the Eagles and the Lions are just. Yeah, 49ers have a lot of injuries, though. Yeah. So the Eagles. Not Hurts or A.J. Brown or Hurts is hurting. Hurts has lots of injuries. I mean, he's playing hurt. Um. Their defense has lots of injuries. I mean, they got uh, who was it? Who was, there was a bunch of players not playing. It's not like you're playing without Debo and your best players, though. Yeah, I mean. I mean, the, the reality, though, I mean, hurt players or not, Dallas dominated them. Yeah, it was a home game, too. Yeah, they Eagles capitalized beat, on... Guess it's a split. split. They split home. They beat each one on their own, each other's home. Yeah. I mean, I'm by not writing no, out the Eagles... At by no moment, means, I just, though, I think Dallas is better than Philly, but... Like we talked about last week, you know, Philly is like circling the wagons right now. They'll get their, they'll right their ship this week. Yeah. Yeah. They'll play the Giants. They should beat the Giants, play them at home. It, someone they playing the Seahawks. They start talking about looking at home field and who needs it and who doesn't. Philly and Dallas need it. But I think the the Niners can travel and win. Yeah, it's a difference. I, I think that you look at. I don't think Philly can travel. I don't think Dallas can travel. But I think when you look at whoever wins that division has an advantage. <clears throat> you know. So who who does win that division? I right still now? Think Philly wins it. You they still got, think Philly wins the division? I think Dallas takes a loss here. Because they're both ten and three right now. Yeah. I, I I think I think it's going to be Philly at the end of the day. I, Dallas's schedule is too complex. 
they have some tough games. And I think they're going to take a loss or two. Dude, the, the Cowboys have let's see they uh, got the Bills, the Dolphins, the Lions. Yeah. And then the Commanders to end it. But the Lions at home, but they got to travel to to Miami and Buffalo. Yeah, Bills, Dolphins. That's a tough schedule. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what the the Eagles have just already gone through. The Phillies got Seahawks, Giants, Cardinals, Giants. So they got Giants twice. But the Giants are playing good. But well, still. no, I mean you you got to think Philly wins a division with that schedule. Yeah, they do. Well, and then that's where I'm talking about is so the Cowboys and the Eagles have the same record right now, but the Eagles have already gone through their hard. Part. Yeah, they went Dolphins, Commanders, Cowboys, Chiefs, Bills, Niners, Cowboys. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely that's tough. And I think I think they lost to the Jets. Come on, dude. But I think fatigue also it kind of plays a part. I think Detroit is the same thing. <laughs> I think they're just fatigued and. But I think they'll sir I think I think they'll win the division. Well, plus the Lions are relying on a lot of rookies and they're hitting the rookie wall. Yeah. Yeah, Lions uh struggling a little bit here. Uh let's see. So yeah, I mean that was crazy. Obviously, Miami losing to Tennessee at the end of the game. Like that was pretty intense. Well, it all changed when Hill got hurt. Yeah. But still, like, the, they just folded for the last five minutes. It's kind of killing my MVP there, but it also <laughs> saying, hey, this is how valuable this guy is. They lost to Tennessee. Come on. Levis went they, for 327. They, they're here. How about this? Why don't you guard DeAndre Hopkins over the middle? <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins. Do you see that? some of those catches? Why does he have to play for the Titans? And then, God. so last game here, week fourteen. Uh, geez, Raiders, Vikings. Oh, geez, do we even have to three talk? to nothing? Lowest scoring game in what 20, 30, 40 years? Dude, I can't even believe I made an attempt to watch the game. Like you know, what? What happened here with nothing with the happened. Raiders? That's the key. Nothing happened. You know what happened? Josh Jacobs got hurt, and Aiden O'Connell looked like a rookie. He is a rookie. Here's my thing, and it just kind of irritates me to no end. Because I'm watching, I'm not watching it because it wasn't on TV. I've got Bleacher Report on, like telling me every play, and I'm getting mad at every play. And I'm like, okay, incomplete pass, Jacoby Myers. Incomplete pass, Hunter Renfro. Incomplete pass, you know, Michael Mayer. And I'm like, where the F is incomplete pass or completion to Devontae Adams? Right. When you're, when it's, you haven't scored, just throw him the ball every time. Yeah. That's your fail save. Because you do that, you beat the Vikings. The Vikings scored three points because Josh Dobbs was horrific. Well, that's because Nick Mullins came, came in, in and threw more yards than any, but he had like 80 yards passing. Dude, when you get subbed out for Nick Mullins, you got a problem. Yeah, that's a big problem. Well, and then Jefferson got re hurt. Yeah. I so mean, he I might thought, not come back again. Yeah. Je- Jefferson, that's the one thing. He got rocked. Like, he got clocked over the middle. I yeah. thought I thought he went to the hospital because of kidney damage. <laughs> it, he got hit right in the kidneys. That yeah. was a perfect hit, though. It was perfect. Yeah, I, I don't think Jefferson wants to play anymore for the <laughs> Vikings. After he getting hit like that? No. Like, you just come off IR, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I'm good. All right, so we, we got to run through this. Fourteen was good. Uh, 
I gained up a few games, so let's get into week 15 and let's see if I can uh, gain some more here. You guys ready with your picks? Here we go, HSC Podcast, NFL Week 15. Start with Thursday night game, the Chargers at the Raiders. I'll lead off here, and uh, I'm going to take the Raiders. No Justin Herbert, which the Chargers are just bad with Justin Herbert. The Raiders are bad too, but I think uh, I think the Raiders at home are going to do it. So I'm going to take the Raiders by a touchdown. Here's two of the um, Justin Herbert isn't as good as <laughs> advertised thing. Most quarterback losses over the first four seasons in the last ten years. Blake Bortles with forty. Derek Carr with 34, Jameis Winston with 33, Justin Herbert, and Sam Darnold with 32. <laughs> Ooh, Sam, you're tied with Sam Darnold. Ooh. He's that's in cool. bad company, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, and even how the Raiders played last week, I wasn't going to pick them until I was like, East and Stick. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, East and Stick. I got it. I, I so, a person named East and Stick. I just, I have to take the Raiders, but I don't, I don't. So it's not going to be a pretty game. Al Michaels is going to be very upset this week. Dude, Al, Al's had it. What do you got, Wes? Dude, I certainly don't have Easton Stick, I'll tell you that. <laughs> where, did, where did they even get these guys? You know? <laughs> no, I'm taking the Raiders. They, that's just they, – they, they, I think they'll do enough. They'll score like 12 points and win by two. Easton well, Stick like... from the great North Dakota State. All right, well – Census there. Let's see. Uh, Minnesota at Cincinnati. Derek, what do you got? I'm taking the Bengals. I think the Vikings are starting Nick Mullins this week, and they looked horrible against the Raiders. And we've already talked about how Jake Browning's the next Tom Brady. Next so Tom Brady. Brady. <laughs> yeah, we, I think we made headlines, Steve. I think Steve made headlines. It wasn't my headline. I was just. We are going to be. Like, you're gonna be somewhere on on some blogosphere, dude. <laughs> Next, Tom Brady. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, Cincinnati. What do you got, Wes? Oh, I, I'm going with the Bengals. I mean, I think Nick Mullins. I he he might have a little bit more than 80 yards in this game. I think he's just gonna get wrecked. I think it's um he's gonna become Nick Mullins of old and the Bengals are playing good offensively. Um, yeah, I think, I think they win by a couple touchdowns. Yeah, we're in, we're all in uh, agreement here. I don't see how Minnesota can win a game the rest of the year. Especially, uh, I think Jefferson is done again. Yeah, why <laughs> I think, back? Yeah, I don't Nick know. Going to He'll me. ever play again. Yeah, I got Nick Ball. I'm going to play. No, I'm good. No, he's good. So Cincinnati by 10 here. Uh, let's see. West Pittsburgh at Indianapolis. Um, so I'm going with Uncle Rico. How can I not? Because Steelers are going with Mitchell Trubisky, who is atrocious. <laughs> I guess. The Steelers were just atrocious against the Patriots. Um, yeah, I got, I got, I got the Colts by uh, ten. I got Uncle Rico too, but not by ten. I think it's gonna be a close game just because Pittsburgh's defense keeps them in it. But at the end of the day, if you can't score, you can't win. So I'm gonna stay with uh, Uncle Rico by three. Who would have thought that you would miss Cody 
pick it, <laughs> pick it, pick it. But it's true. It was 11 touchdowns and nine interceptions and eight fumbles. But it's still better than Chicago Bear legend Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was atrocious. It's still that some of those picks, they were epically bad. So yeah, I got I got the Colts keeping it close, covering. I say they win by three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh let's see. Denver at Detroit. I've been riding Denver for a while, but at home against Detroit, I think Detroit has to win this game. I don't think, uh, yeah, I just, they're not as bad as they looked in the last few games. I think it's time, Campbell will get in the in the locker room, he'll turn them around, and he'll say, you know, we got to beat Denver here. So I'm going to take Detroit by seven. They're going to start biting those kneecaps. Yeah. I'm like, I'm with you. I got Detroit winning by seven. I don't think the Broncos, you've rided the Broncos. I just don't think the Broncos are that good. In certain games there. When they hurt Justin Herbert and have to deal with the stick. Yeah. Yeah. The best is taking the Broncos. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I never want to take the Broncos. Whenever I have the opportunity to take the other team, I'll take it. And they're playing a good team. Even though they're not playing that good. Take Detroit by four. <clears throat> and uh, Saturday games, too, by the way. Yeah, why didn't they have them this last Saturday? Huh? Stupid. Here we go. Get some Saturday games going. Uh, let's see. Derek, Chicago at Cleveland. Gotta go Joe Flacco, man. Joe Flacco. Healing, <laughs> Joe healing, Flacco healing. Has, has more touchdowns than Cody Pickett <laughs> already. Yeah, I think it's just... It's in Cleveland. The Browns defense is really tough. Flacco, I mean, plays decent, doesn't make mistakes. So I got to go with the Browns by – they'll cover. I'll say they win by four. Yeah. I think that for some reason, whenever anybody plays at Cleveland, guys look slower. And I think – their field it's their (laughs) field they're gonna be they're gonna be soaking down the field before the game so you know justin fields doesn't go off on them it doesn't matter i think the browns are going to win because i think their defense is playing good and flacco is dealing he is dealing diamond at 38 (laughs) you're gonna get right off the your contract right off the couch he's making 300 and $30,000. $30,000. <laughs> That's because he's already made like a hundred million. Come on. Well, let's go with the swing game. No. I'm going with the Bears, and here's why. Because the Bears are they they feel there's there's so you're saying there's a chance. And uh the Browns just aren't that good. Even with Mr. Flacco. Their defense is solid. Won't will not contain fields. I got Chicago by 10. Whoa! Hold on. This, well, Eberflus is staying then, Steve. You're stuck yeah. with him. I, I might be. Might be. But it's an all or nothing game for Chicago. I really I really believe that. I think it's an all or nothing game for Fields. If he looks I think, back, I think, I think he goes problem. off. I think, I think it's Fields nothing. Fields goes off. And I'm putting him in in fantasy and he's going to score 30. That's where we're at. <laughs> oh man. 
Oh man, Tampa, Tampa Bay at Green Bay, Wes. The Battle of the Bays. The Battle of the Bays. An old school, old school rivals. I, I gotta go. With, gotta go with Green Bay. Tampa's not playing bad. They're leading their division at atrocious six and seven, <laughs> but I think it's gonna be six and eight. It'll be close. I say Packers by three. Uh, yeah. You know what? I disagree. I actually believe Tampa wins this division. So, and I think this game is a big game for them. So I'm going to go with Tampa here because I don't believe in Jordan Love, especially on the road. It's not on the road. They're not on the road. They're at home. Oh, no, they're in Green Bay. Green Bay. Lambo. Lambo. Field. I thought I was at Tampa, but I'm still going to go with Tampa. He's still going to go. He doesn't care. Even even in Green Bay. because It might be snowing, dude. Baker this... doesn't do well in the snow. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> the Bake Show, man. It doesn't do well in the snow. I actually the thought this was in Tampa for some reason, but I'm still I'm still going with Tampa because they need this you know game. Points, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with Tampa. Tampa by a touchdown. Yeah, I'm taking um the Packers. <laughs> they're at home. They're at home. Damn it. They're at home. So I'm taking the Packers here. Oh, this is funny. The, the Bucks could still win the division, but you know, they'll have like ten losses. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, we got back-to-back swing games. I'm gonna make up some ground here. Let's see, Houston at Tennessee. Oh man, I'm gonna have to go with Tennessee here. It's at home. I think Derrick Henry. I think uh, Hopkins is looking good lately. I think uh, Will Levis has found a little bit of like, hey, why don't I just throw it up to the one of the best receivers in the league? So I'm going to stay with Tennessee by three. Wish the yeah, Ravens I don't think I don't think CJ Stroud's playing, so I'm taking Tennessee. Probably by seven. Yeah, I agree. Tennessee will win, but not by a lot. Well, I got them by ten. That <laughs> seems like a lot. <laughs> well, uh, let's see, Derek the the Jets at Miami. You know, this is the Dolphins get right game. And Zach Wilson gets mer- brutalized again by New York media. I got the um I got the Dolphins winning by 10. Yeah, West looks looks like he wants to go with Zach Wilson. Is uh yeah, I, I'm take I'm taking the Dolphins. <laughs> Because yeah, I think they're. I think Zach Wilson doesn't have a good game, and is Waddle playing? I didn't. Is Waddle? I mean, Waddle's banged up. Is is Hill, he, Hill's he, banged up? Moser Waddle banged play, up. was playing in the game. Okay, yeah, he had I mean, catches they all play, the but they all have little. I, I think I think um, bang, they're a little I think banged up. Those are H and they're gonna. I think. They're gonna run the ball. Um, I don't think they'll win by a lot, but I think they'll win by like five. Well, I mean, Zach Wilson's back, dude. Throws for three hundred yards. Zach is always back until he, the next game where he's Garrett stuck. Wilson looked good. The defense looks solid, and so I'm gonna take Miami by uh, two touchdowns <laughs> because Zach Wilson's trash. And uh, the Jets aren't back. Look, I mean, let's not get it wrong. 
you played a good t- good game against a bad team. So <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, it is Miami's get right game. So Miami's going to come back, blow out the doors, uh, at least two touchdowns. Uh, let's see, Wes, Kansas City at New England. <laughs> the game of the week. Um, I, I got to go with Kansas City. They have to win this game. Um, even though. Give me some Bailey Zappy. Zappy's back, dude. But I don't think that's going to amount to much just because um, Chiefs have to win the game. I think they win by uh, eight. I mean, it's definitely a, a must win game for the Chiefs, which is why I'm taking the Patriots. Dude. Dude. Oh, no. I'm taking the Patriots because you know what? The Chiefs are actually trash. Oh, no. Dude, the defending Super Bowl champions. Dude, they. Beavers might be. They're spiraling out of control right now. It's kind of a death spiral. I feel it. It is. It's a. It's an out of control spiral. Worse than the Philly, it's, Philadelphia. It's, it's right a now. swift spiral. It's a, it's swift, a swift spiral. <laughs> That's what happens when you get me. Taylor Swift involved. Here's my you face. You lose Put my to the Patriots. Swift. It's a Swifty spiral. You lose to the Patriots. And and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Just, just hear me out for a second. New right. England at home. They've already said, oh, I don't know if Bill Belichick's going to stay with us. And he's going to come out. He's going to beat the Chiefs and he'd be like, look, that's why I'm the best. That's why I want to go to the Chargers. And he's gonna leave the team anyway, but still he's gonna beat the Chargers or beat the, the Chiefs. So <laughs> go on with the Patriots. Dude, you know how mad Mahomes is gonna be if he loses. Dude, he's mad. gonna mad, mad, big he's... mad. Not so fast, big box. <laughs> Here's what's gonna really happen. <laughs> The Chiefs are going to get every single call going their oh, way. Oh, that's right. It's going to be like, oh, and the Chiefs are going to win and they're going to win by like 21 because this is the game where, oh, well, poor, the poor Chiefs got their, got their feelings hurt. Taylor so was gonna... crying. Taylor was crying after rumors said Taylor, someone saw an account of Taylor crying. So, you know what? We can't have that. Little girls are crying. We can't have that. Kadarius Tony's going to be five yards off sides, and they're not going to care. <laughs> he's going to he's going to be lined up in the secondary. They're going to give him a warning. <laughs> You're like, hey man, you, you should check the line of scrimmage. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. So that's a swing game. Got a couple of them going. So let's see. Uh, the Giants at New Orleans. Uh, here's the thing. New Orleans is trash. It's not my favorite team anymore. And I don't think I'll bet them to win for the rest of the year. I'm taking Tommy Danny DeVito. The Italian Stallion. Tommy Cutlets to win this game by a touchdown. That's what I got. The Giants. <laughs> got to take the Giants here. And who knows? I might be making pork cutlets next week. I haven't thought, <laughs> I've been thinking about it. It this sounds good. Cannolis. Always. Some uh, penne vodka. Who knows? A little modella, a little modella, a sandwich. Derek's See. making spaghetti and meatballs. So, yeah, I'm taking the Giants. Like Steve, I had hopes that the Saints should be up for best record in the NFL right now because of their schedule, but they're trash. So, yeah, I'm taking the Giants for the upset. Yeah. It's the passing paisano. Got to go with the passing paisano, dude. Um, 
Yeah, I think I think the uh, Saints are now the INTs. They are officially the INTs. <laughs> officially the INTs. So, and so yeah, Giants by five. We could all lose that one, just so you guys know. I know. So, and then of this course, is going to be the game where Carr throws for like four hundred yards. <laughs> Oh man, game of the week here, uh, Derek. Atlanta at Carolina. I this is a tough one for me because I can't stand Arthur Smith, but he's playing the Panthers, so that's like the only team I'll take the Falcons against. So this game. Algier will have like 150 yards rushing. <laughs> Bijan will have like three carries and they'll beat the Panthers by three. What do you think yeah. about that, Wes? I got to play prevent defense here. And even though I hate them, like not as much as the Broncos, nobody will. There's a special place. There's the Broncos, but the Falcons are moving in that direction. Because they ruined my fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm going with the Falcons. You suck, but they the Carolina sucks worse. So. I can't disagree. Got the Falcons winning by a field goal in an ugly game by the smallest amount possible margin yeah. possible. I mean, just a late field goal where. They want to look them. like they're going to win, but the Panthers are just so bad. But this could be where Steve gets mad because no, Panthers might win a game. And Panthers uh, are given the first round pick. That's it. That's it. Uh, let's see. Let's see if they can win, make two wins out of them. <laughs> the Commanders at the Rams. Wes, what do you got? Heather Wes's favorite team. Oh yeah, the the Commodores. Um I I I got the Rams. Rams are in playoff contention. Uh Washington is not. So I'm taking the Rams by uh 10. I mean the reality is everybody in the NFC except the Panthers is in playoff contention. I think Washington isn't either. Yeah, they are. They're, They're five four and, and four and nine. Four and four and <laughs> make them four and nine. Yeah, four and nine. They're right there. They're only two games out, <laughs> three games out. Um, yeah, I mean, they're not close, but I also yeah, got the the, I think only the Panthers and the Patriots have been eliminated from yeah. playoffs contention. I, I, I still think the Rams win this game pretty easily by 10 as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not taking the commanders. I'll take the Rams. <laughs> I'll keep it closer. I'll say by six. I don't think they cover. Uh San Francisco at Arizona. This is me. I just think San Francisco just dominates the game. It's a pretty easy win for them. And uh, in a blowout by 21. Cardinals are two and two since Kyler Murray came back. So you're taking the Cardinals? No, not against the Niners. <laughs> but I think it's closer than I think. I don't think they cover. I think it's like a 13 point win because it's in Arizona. If it was in San Francisco, I would say probably 21. But we'll keep it close. Kyler, Kyler does. The thing with Kyler Murray is is he's not the typical quarterback, so it's hard for really good defenses to play him because it's not what they're used to. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got the Niners by it's gonna be closer to, I think. I think Arizona will keep it competitive. I think they win by six, the Niners. I mean, I, I think they could win by 50, just to be honest, but we'll keep it close. 
Uh, let's see, Derek. Uh, Dallas at Buffalo. This is an interesting game. I got the Bills. I'm still not sold on Dallas. They're going to Buffalo, so we'll see how that temperature and everything is. And I think Josh Allen's starting to hit his stride again. And everyone's going to be like uh, forgetting about all his interceptions and everything. And this is the game that they finally stopped talking about Dak Prescott for MVP. So I got the Bills winning by seven. Yeah, I, I got the Bills too. I think this is the game where Dallas takes a loss here in, in that brutal run. Um, I think this is the most likely loss because they are to travel to Buffalo. Buffalo is, I mean, they're already in playoff mode. They've been in playoff mode the last couple of weeks. They're playing like they're in the playoffs because of they're in survival mode and they're going to do whatever it takes to win versus Dallas. Dallas is feeling great that Dax in the MVP conversation, we should just all, you know, give them the, the trophy now because everyone should get a trophy <laughs> mid season trophy for Dak. Congratulations. It ends in Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo by uh, five. Thought there might be some Dallas picks here. So uh it doesn't matter. I still have Buffalo as well. Buffalo has to keep winning. They gotta they gotta get into playoffs. I think this is a must win for them. But I think the key is it's in Buffalo. So I also have Buffalo at home at by seven as well. Uh, West Baltimore at Jacksonville. I'm going with the Baltimore. Uh, I don't think Lawrence is going to be right for the rest of the year. He threw three interceptions, uncharacteristically bad for him. But I think Buffalo is riding high. They won a tough game last week. I just think they – Lamar's playing good. And – I think defensively, they'll do enough. They should win. Uh, they can win by four. Yeah, I'm, I'm not – I think Jacksonville's on their downturn, and I also don't believe Trevor Lawrence looks right. So, I think Baltimore handles this game pretty well, um, even on the road. Yep. I'm still going to take Baltimore by 11. This is our classic Baltimore game, though, where that they could lose. But like you said, <laughs> that Trevor Lawrence is he should have just sat out and yeah. got healthy. So I got yeah, I got the Ravens win by six. Monday night game, Seattle, Philadelphia at Seattle. I think Seahawks are just on a downturn. Just don't look good on both sides of the ball for the last, I don't know, what, four or five weeks. And Philly, this is this is their get right game. I think I said before they were struggling in San Francisco. They were they knew what they were doing, need to get do it against Dallas. Now is when they circle the wagons and they beat the Seahawks. So I got Philly by seven. Yeah, I agree. I talked about it earlier. This is the Eagles get right game. Then everyone can stop talking about the Eagles being like horrible and then how the Cowboys are so good. This will be the week where they're like, oh, now they'll be talking about something else. And then, yeah. So I got the Eagles. Yeah, I got the Eagles too by eight. Not a lot of swing games in there, but a few. So. I gained uh, three games this week. Steve's like the Bills. <laughs> you're, you're totally the He's Bills now. Playoff mode. I'm in playoff mode right now. And watch out because we'll talk about HSE podcast fantasy football. I am also in playoff mode. <laughs> and I'm playing Team John. 
And we got Big Mike and and Mike Knight in uh, round one, and uh, the the Bears and Team John as well. Tough tough losses there. Derek took a took a big loss to Team Awesome. <laughs> They scored the most points awesome. in the weekend. I know. Team Awesome just like what a game. <laughs> but really, can you not tell me the game of the week was Cortland and Team John? Oh my gosh. I couldn't believe that. Scored I thought, 60 some points. I was looking at that. I'm like, oh, okay, Cortland's gonna win this. And then I'm like, what? Can you imagine missing the playoffs, losing to a team that scored 67 points? Team John plays defense, man. Team oh, John plays defense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I talked to Big Mike today. I told him, like, you got to change your team because <laughs> you're in the playoffs now. And uh, he was like, what do you mean I'm in the playoffs? <laughs> Dude, that's so the best <laughs> record of the two. How disrespectful is it? We're gonna, we got to give his ring to somebody else. <laughs> we'll give it to your sister, a team awesome, who knocked us all out of the playoffs. Oh, my gosh. Your sister gets it by default. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. If, if uh, we lose to a team that computer drafted and didn't do a single sub all year. Dude, I saw in the future. Two of the four teams made the playoffs. Right. Didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. And I made the playoffs, and all most of my top picks have been hurt all season. Uh-huh. I lost Chubb early. I, Andrews has been out. Debo was out for five weeks. Fields was out for five weeks. So all my top four picks have been hurt for a minimum of five weeks. Some yeah. out for the season. Yeah. So what does that tell you about fantasy football? <laughs> oh, brutal. Uh, but that's where we're at right now. So we got uh, playoffs starting now. Two, two weeks to play each playoff game. And the only chance we have to win is me. Uh-huh. And Tyreek gets an ankle injury. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, come on, man. Really? This is what's gonna how we're gonna do it right now. HN is back, so Mozart's carries are gonna go down. Right. So yeah, now A Chain's gonna take Mozart's carries and Hill's not gonna play like crazy. But that's our that's has Herbert starting though, so (laughs) So Team John has Herbert starting. Let's go. All right, well. We'll wrap it up here with that. You got these weeks. I'm going to try to make up a few games this week. I think Wes had a seven-game lead. Cut that down by a few this week. But we only got a few weeks left in the NFL. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't wait till playoffs, to be honest with you. I don't know if you guys looked at the standings, but it's a mess. Mm-hmm. I stopped looking because it doesn't even matter anymore. Look, look at the NFC. It's a, it's a disaster. For the last two spots or three spots, well, two spots really because they got four and one. So, yeah, two spots is going to be crazy. The only thing I want is seven seed. I want Tommy DeVito in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to get there. I want him to catch. The, uh, you got a game You got a game on the tap backers there. Like, Well, does the uh, – AFC, you have one, two, three, four, five, two, six teams at seven and six. Yeah. And yeah, they're I guess it's both sides, right? Both sides are in the same same predicament. Well, kind and kind of. The the E the NFC, you have one seven and six team, and that's the Vikings. 
And then you have uh, one, two, three, five, six, and seven teams. Right. Oh, six, because the Buccaneers are the four seed right now. At yeah. Six. <laughs> Even though you don't know who's going to win that division. So, yeah, because the Falcons and Saints are both six and seven. <laughs> Again, two years in a row, you would have thought they would have gotten better. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good playoff run. So we, we're gonna have a lot to talk about over the next few weeks of NFL. Who's gonna who's gonna make it, who's gonna not? So that should be fun. But uh I I mean I just gotta say I gotta I gotta make up a few more games this week to have a chance here in the last few games of the season. West still holding on to the lead. Uh, wrap it up here. Any last thoughts? College football, NFL. No, just uh, Otani to the Dodgers. That's awesome. <laughs> Dude, that was probably my favorite. Hundred million dollars, but that it's is... mostly deferred. Did you know that? It's, it's such deferred. a crazy. He's going to be getting paid two million dollars a year, and then in like twenty thirty four, he's going to get sixty eight million dollars a year. Stupid. It doesn't even matter when your contract says seven hundred million. Like, come on, dude. That's it's a lot. That's I a lo lot. I love Otani. He's my favorite player. I and I'm glad he's going to Do I heard Toronto. I almost freaked out. Yeah. It was like he's going to Toronto. I go, he better not go to Toronto. I'm gonna well, it's like, why would he want to go to Toronto? He wants to win. Yeah. He wants to be in LA. Well, I don't know why you want to go to California. You're gonna lose. 75 percent of your money to taxes you don't think toronto's the same way in... <laughs> yeah, anyway. doesn't really matter he won't lose it until 2034 right yeah. right well, then, and you know the country left <laughs> you know in la how many sponsorships and everything plus uh japan it's easier for him to watch his games in la right. well yeah and, and he's gonna get so many um Outside contracts, like you're saying, it's not even going to matter. Now I want to go to a. I've I've never been to a Dodger. Game. He'll he'll probably make a billion dollars off of you yeah. outside contracts. Dodger Stadium is. I've been there. It is pretty awesome. Yeah. It's all yeah, that, that was nuts. All right, we'll wrap it up, everybody. Thanks for listening. Let us know. Comment. Like. We'll see you next time.